Which band member never took a music lesson? And how'd they trigger a feud with Dream Theater? And what does Neil deGrasse Tyson have to do with all this? Avenged Sevenfold has rocked its way into some weird moments. Find out right here, plus so much more. In December 2009, Avenged Sevenfold's drummer and backing vocalist Jimmy the Rev Sullivan passed away. At 28 years of age, the Rev's untimely death shocked his family and friends as his musical career was only getting started, and it ended so abruptly. For his bandmates, it almost proved to be too much. They contemplated closing the chapter of the band once and for all. Lead guitarist Sinister Gates told Kerrang! We all sat down and said, we gotta throw in the towel. Without Jimmy, there is no Avenged Sevenfold. But when we sat and talked with Jimmy's family, they were like, you guys have got to do this. He added that the Sullivan family encouraged the band to continue, since they believed it would be something that the Rev would have wanted them to do. Gates revealed that it was difficult to do so initially, but the band was glad that the people around them pushed them forward. For over 10 years, Avenged Sevenfold called Warner Brothers their home. The band released four albums, City of Evil, Avenged Sevenfold, Nightmare, and Hail to the King, claiming two Billboard 200 chart-topping records in this period. Somewhere along the line, though, the relationship between the label and the band soured, and Avenged Sevenfold informed Warner Brothers that they would not be working with them any longer at the end of 2015. So, what did the execs do? They sued the band, as per an exclusive Billboard news report. The group released their next album, The Stage, with Capitol Records, but then returned to Warner Brothers Records. Lead vocalist M. Shadows explained the shift in a March 2022 interview with the Bob Left Sets podcast, saying, The people that we had a problem with at Warner Brothers that simply weren't engaged in the band had left. And some new people came in and they said, Come back to Warner Brothers, Finish up your deal, and we'll deal with it from there. We are still currently with one record left on Warner Brothers Records. We'll be uh, finishing that record up. I think we have May locked out. Band drama. Who doesn't love a little bit of those shenanigans? Turns out that Avenged Sevenfold aren't about that life. But in 2010, the band was unintentionally caught up in the messy split between their former session drummer Mike Portnoy and his band Dream Theater. Portnoy had stepped in to complete the drum tracks for the Nightmare album after the passing of the Rev, though he was never made a permanent member of Avenged Sevenfold. According to an interview that rhythm guitarist Zachy Vengeance had with the radio station 107.7 The Bone, Avenged Sevenfold told Portnoy from the beginning that the gig was only temporary, since they weren't ready to find a full-time replacement for the Rev at the time. Vengeance admitted that the band was taken aback when Portnoy told them that he quit Dream Theater, announced it on social media, and was ready to join them full-time. The band reminded him that wasn't what was agreed upon, then had to watch as Portnoy and Dream Theater publicly feuded. The drama aside, Vengeance said Avenged Sevenfold would always be grateful to Portnoy for helping the band out when they needed him. There was a time when the M and MTV stood for music, and the channel actually played music and featured bands. One of the most popular shows on MTV at the time was Total Request Live, or TRL, where the most requested music videos by fans would be played on air. Initially hosted by Carson Daly, it was a big deal to get featured on TRL, and it helped legitimize many bands in the mainstream. By 2005, it was almost unheard of for heavier bands to feature on the show, as the top hits of the year were more of the poppier or R&B variety. So imagine how Avenged Sevenfold must have felt when their song Bat Country flapped its way to the top of the TRL charts. Speaking to MTV, M. Shadows admitted it was a strange feeling. When we even heard that we were being announced on TRL, I think we were just like, that's kind of weird, but it was a decision we had to make. Do we want to go that route and do that? But it's a very tough market to sell CDs and get people to hear you, so we were just excited to be number one. Fans who picked up 2003's Waking the Fallen and 2005's City of Evil would have immediately noticed not only the difference in the musical approach, but also in M. Shadow's vocal style. While it wasn't like he'd gone from belting out raining blood to mbop, there was certainly a shift as he moved away from screaming to singing. As Shadows once explained in an interview with rock site Blistering, the change was entirely intentional, since the band had no intention of releasing a similar-sounding album again. 
the avenged sevenfold singer went under the tutelage of vocal coach Ron Anderson, who worked with singers like Guns N' Roses' Axl Rose and Soundgarden's Chris Cornell for nine months before entering the studio. Shadows explained, You hear Scott Weiland, Axl Rose, or Chris Cornell, and they all have that high, distorted, gritty, whiny low range. Ron taught me how to have that grit to my voice while still having the tone. He brought all of that to the table, and he brought that technique to my voice. Shadows also wasn't too concerned if fans accused him of selling out, since he believed this singing change was necessary for the evolution of the band and its sound. A lot of bands that have roots in the hardcore and metal scenes are political. They aren't afraid of airing their views on various topics and showing their audience which side of the fence they are on. According to M. Shadows, however, Avenged Sevenfold prefers to keep their personal political views out of their music, since they believe the messages often get taken out of context and create more conflict in the fan base. In an interview with Rock 106.9, Shadows said, I would consider myself pretty political, but I try to keep it out of the music. Because I just know that every soundbite you'll get from me in a radio interview or a magazine, then there can always be a counter-argument which I'll never be able to give a rebuttal to. It took a while after the Rev's passing for Avenged Sevenfold to decide on a permanent drummer. Aaron Illahai joined the band in 2011, but he was let go in 2015. Not long afterward, Bad Religion's Brooks Wackerman was announced as the new man behind the drum kit. It surprised many people in the music industry, especially since Wackerman had been with the legendary punk band for 14 years when he quit to join Avenged Sevenfold. So why did he decide to put in his notice? In a conversation with Drum Magazine, Wackerman revealed the simple and highly relatable reason. At the time when the Avenged guys asked me to join, I was looking for a different style, or at least a new adventure. They were familiar with my work, so I was honored they even asked me. Wackerman added that his drum idols were all hard rock and metal drummers, so joining Avenged Sevenfold was something of a return to his roots. He might have made a name for himself in the punk scene, but metal was always number one in his heart. Being a part of the rock and metal community is occasionally unpredictable. While some fans just like music, other fans can be dedicated, too dedicated, toxic, and everything in between. Having been around the block for over two decades now, Avenged Sevenfold understands the volatility of rock and metal fans, especially in online forums and social media platforms where comments often degenerate into verbal mudslinging about tastes. Why don't you go with Volchuk to one of his heavy metal vomit parties and like, listen to heavy metal and like, vomit? Well, you're being so lame. Not as lame as you. Answering fan questions for Metal Hammer, M. Shadows said that the online criticism doesn't bother the band at all. He explained, The internet lost its bite many years ago for me. You can go on any artist's YouTube channel or Facebook and copy and paste the comments. New stuff sucks, or I'm disappointed, blah blah blah, who cares? Shadows revealed that he doesn't let the praise dictate his mood either, suggesting that people shouldn't be too concerned about what others say or think about them in general. Regardless of what anyone thinks of Avenged Sevenfold's music, no one can deny that Zacky Vengeance and Sinister Gates' guitar playing is impressive. The dual axemen sweep the melodies through their galloping riffs and lightning speed solos as they ensure that the guitar is the central instrument to every song. While Gates studied different genres at Hollywood's Musicians Institute and learned a few tricks from his musician father, Brian Hayner Sr., Vengeance doesn't have any formalized training. He revealed, I've never taken a guitar lesson in my life. I never cared about any of that. I just care about music, and I care about the way that it makes me feel. Vengeance added that he has never seen himself as one of the great guitar players, no matter how much praise he receives from others, stating that the reason he picked up his guitar in the first place was because of his love of music. Talk about being born with it. Sin will always write guitar parts that are way too hard for me to play. <laughs> and I'll try my very best to learn how to play them, and I usually can. Much like the box office receipts tell a studio if a film is successful or not, the sales charts are all that record labels care about. These are the numbers that executives pour over and want to see in their boardroom meetings as they show if an album has been a good investment for them. Despite having two albums hit the top spot in the Billboard 200, M. Shadows told Metal Hammer that Avenged Sevenfold aren't looking at the charts to validate what they're doing. The vocalist revealed that The Stage remains his favorite album to date, even if it isn't their top-selling record. 
The surprise release debuted at number 4 on the Billboard 200, which was three positions lower than its predecessors, Hail to the King and Nightmare. Shadows declared that the band stood by their decision to drop the surprise album without any marketing and weren't too concerned about the numbers. Additionally, he said that after their next release, they would have no label and are looking forward to the freedom to experiment and connect directly with the fans. One of the most eclectic tracks off the stage is the finale Exist, part of which is narrated by renowned astrophysicist and science personality Neil deGrasse Tyson. It was also the band's longest track, clocking in at 15 minutes and 41 seconds. As it turns out, Tyson had some thoughts on the song's radical length and voiced his concerns, as M. Shadows revealed to Loudwire, He's like, are you sure you want to do a 15-minute song? You know, Imagine by John Lennon is very simple. And I was like, we got the music part, dude. Trust me, this is going to be cool. And he's like, okay, as long as you really want three minutes of me talking. Considering how the likes of Metal Injection and Enemy gushed about the experimental Avenged Sevenfold album and reserved special praise for the track, it's clear that Shadows knew what he was talking about from the start. And Neil deGrasse Tyson was wrong. Who'd have thunk it?